Parents, be alert, ever watchful, that this wickedness might threaten your family circle. We teach a standard of moral conduct that will protect us from Satan's many substitute counters and counterfeits for marriage. We must understand that any persuasion to enter into any relationship that is not in harmony with the principles of the gospel must be wrong. From the Book of Mormon, we learn that wickedness never was happiness. Some suppose that they were preset and cannot overcome what they feel are inborn tendencies toward the impure and the unnatural. Not so. Why would our Heavenly Father do that to anyone? Remember, He is our Father. Paul promised, God will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You can, if you will, break the habits and conquer the addiction and come away from that which is not worthy of any member of the church. As Alma cautioned, we must watch and pray continually. Isaiah warned, warned to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Years ago, I visited a school in Albuquerque. The teacher told me about a youngster who brought a kitten to class. As you can imagine, that disrupted everything. She had him hold up the kitten in front of the children. It went well until one of the children asked, is it a boy kitty or a girl kitty? Not wanting to get into that lesson, the teacher said, it doesn't matter. It's just a kitty. But they persisted. Finally, one boy raised his hand and said, I know how you can tell. Re resigned to face it, the teacher said, how can you tell? And the students answered, you can vote on it. <laughs> you may laugh at the story, but if we're not alert, there are those today who not only tolerate but advocate voting to change laws that would legalize immorality, as if a vote would somehow alter the designs of God's laws and nature. A law against nature would be impossible to enforce. For instance, what good would the law against, vote against the law of gravity do? There are both moral and physical laws irrevocably decreed in heaven before the foundation of the world that cannot be changed. History demonstrates over and over again that moral standards cannot be changed by battle and cannot be changed by ballot. To legalize that which is basically wrong or evil will, will prevent, not repent the pain and penalties that will follow as surely as night follows day. Regardless of the opposition, we are determined to stay on course. We will hold to the principles and laws and ordinance of the gospel. If they are misunderstood, either innocently or willfully, so be it. We cannot change. We will not change the moral standard. We quickly lose our way when we disobey the laws of God. If we do not protect and foster the family, civilization and our liberties must needs perish. I, the Lord, am bound when you do what I say. But when you do not do what I say, you have no promise. Every soul confined to the prison of sin, her guilt or perversion, has a key to the gate. The key is labeled repentance. If you know how to use it, this key, the adversary cannot hold you. The twin principles of repentance and forgiveness exceed in strength the often power of the tempter. If you are bound by habit or an addiction that is unworthy, you must stop that conduct that is harmful. Angels will coach you and the priesthood leaders will guide you through the difficult times. Nowhere are the generosity and the kindness and the mercy of God more manifest 
than in repentance. Do you understand the consummate cleansing power of the atonement made by the Son of God, our Savior and our Redeemer? He said, I, God, suffer these things for all that they might not suffer if they would repent. In that supernal act of love, the Savior paid the penalties for our sins so that we might not have to pay. For those who truly desire, there is a way back. Repentance is like and do detergent. Even ground and stains of sin will come out. Priesthood holders carry with them the antidote to remove the terrible images of pornography and wash away guilt. The priesthood has the power to unlock the influence of our habits, even to unchain from addiction, however tight the grip. It can heal over the scars of the past mistakes. I know of no more beautiful and consoling words in all of the revelation than these. Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven, and I, the Lord, remember them no more. Sometimes, even after confession and paying penalties, the most difficult part of repentance is to forgive oneself. You must come to know that forgiveness means forgiveness. As often as my people repent, will I forgive them their trespasses against me. President Joseph Fielding Smith told me of a repentant woman struggling to find her way out of a very immoral life. She asked him what she should do now. In turn, he asked her to read to him from the Old Testament the account of Lot's wife, who was turned to a pillar of salt. Then he asked her, what lesson do you gain from those verses? She answered, the Lord will destroy the wicked. Not so, President Smith said. The lesson to this repentant woman for you is don't look back. Strange enough it be, it be that the simplest and most powerful prevention and cure for pornography or any clean, unclean act is to ignore and avoid it. Delete from the mind any unworthy thought that tries to take root. Once you decided to remain clean, you are asserting your, asserting your God-given agency. And then, as President Smith counseled, don't look back. I promise you that ahead of you is peace and happiness for you and your family. The ultimate end of all activity in the church is that a man and his wife and their children can be happy at home and invoke the blessings of the Lord upon you who are struggling against this terrible plague to find the healing that is available to us in the priesthood of the Lord. I bear witness of that power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.